On April 16th this year, the, the um, National Cancer Institute is releasing the latest cancer statistics. Our statistics that we're currently releasing are from 1973 all the way to 2009. Um, we are just now releasing data from 2009, and this reflects the complicated process that we go through to collect collect the data and ensure the quality of the information that we collect. So the 2009 information on overall mortality shows a continuation of the decline in mortality rates that we've seen since the late 1990s. The top four cancers that we see are um, prostate cancer, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and lung cancer. And together these four sites make up over 50 percent of the cancers that we find um, in, our, in our data set. All the mortality rates for all of those cancers in men and women when for colorectal cancer and lung cancer are all decreasing. And that's a continued decrease from what we've seen in the last few years. For incidence, um, it, for lung cancer, for both men and women, it's decreasing. Prostate cancer is decreasing. Colorectal cancer is, is decreasing. And breast cancer is relatively stable. Two cancer sites where we've seen persisting differences between um, white women and, and black women are cervical cancer and breast cancer. Cervical cancer, the rates are declining for both incidence and mortality in both groups. However, blacks remain at higher risk than whites for incidence and mortality. For breast cancer, it's a complex picture where whites have higher level of incidence, risk of developing breast cancer. but blacks have higher mortality rates. And the difference in mortality between white and black women has been increasing over time rather than decreasing. Lung cancer incidence is declining this year in both men and women, and mortality is declining in men and women as well. However, the trends are very different for men than they are for women. Men have much higher rates but had a decline that started earlier and has continued. Women have had lower rates but they've been fairly level lately and have only shown a decline in the last few years. But with the 2009 data point, we do see a statistically significant decline in incidence and mortality for women as well as men. These trends reflect patterns of smoking in the U.S. Um, where men had higher rates of smoking than women and perhaps stopped smoking earlier. It typically takes a a long time between the smoking behavior and changes in that behavior and when we see the impact on cancer incidence and mortality. The data that we base our statistics on are from the SEER uh, registry program. And SEER stands for Surveillance, Epidemiology, and End Results. When we started SEER back in 1975, we had nine registries, but as time has gone on, we've added more registries to get a better representation of the population um, as far as having adequate covers of different race groups, urban areas versus rural areas, and now in 2009, we have 18 registries and 28 percent of the population. SEER is also part of a larger national program of cancer registries that also includes the registries that are managed by CDC. Together, they cover the vast majority of the United States, and each state in the, in the U.S. has a cancer registry. SEER registries are really a fundamental component of the data system for cancer research and uh, monitoring and surveillance. They're really widely used by researchers, public policy, and of course the public to understand their prognosis after diagnosis. It is also a basis of, of many different annual reports that come out that really describe the cancer burden in the United States. It's part of the um, annual report to the nation, which describes incidence and mortality for the whole U.S., and it is also plays an important role in reports such as um, the American Cancer Society's Facts and Figures, where they estimate the number of cases that they expect to be diagnosed in the current year and the number of cases they expect to die in the current year um, for each for different cancer sites.